Hi, my name is Scott the Miniature Maniac. Welcome to the last Maniac video of 2019, and it's gonna be a garbage one, so brace yourself. What up, Mini Family? 2019 was a huge year for the Miniac channel, and a lot of that is owed to your guys' support for me. So thank you so much. We had 100,000 subscribers. We came out with our own miniature and digital course for it. We got a new set change. A lot of things happened in 20, 20, 2019. So thank you guys for your continued support of what I do. I literally couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you. It's always nice to sit down in front of this camera without a script and just talk to you guys, you know? I don't do that a whole lot, like, throughout the year because I'm always concerned that, like, it's gonna, like, reduce the quality of my videos and make people who are new to the channel not talk, but I wish I did it more, so this is always nice to do. In this video, we like to do a little bit of recap, what was the most popular stuff, some funny saucy comments and also answer some questions in this video so if you don't know about my channel you're just stumbling on through this is gonna be a pretty upsetting video <laughs> so I'm sorry about that the most popular Facebook post was a post about me going full-time which again happened in 2019 I, I don't know a couple months ago I quit my software engineering job to do YouTube full-time and I haven't looked back since it's been a wild ride I have never been happy to be doing so much work about something ever in my life. Sure, sometimes the days are long and I'm trying to finish things on a deadline, but I've never felt like I was suffering. It was always like, I want to be doing this. And the fact that you guys like that Facebook post is just kind of reassurance that people are invested in my success in the platform, which fills me up with warm fuzzies inside. Honestly, there's so many reminders about how awesome my community is that it's impossible to forget so thank you guys so much for that just continued uh like trust and belief in me and and assurance of what i'm doing it really means a lot to me the most popular instagram post was a post about the black friday deals which the biggest one was that i came up with my own miniature it was an 11th month or almost a year long process of developing the concept uh, getting the sculpt getting it casted and then packaging it up and kind of getting the commerce ready to sell it i have a whole video about that if you're curious about the process to make a miniature you can see it uh in some corner i don't know where it is uh, Pachow, I think that's what Adam does. The most popular YouTube video, obviously, was the one about GW contrast paint. How could that not be the most popular one? That was a poppin' subject at the time, and I just kind of rode the bandwagon uh, with my own kind of take on a review of the product. I think that's probably the most popular video on my channel at the moment. Um, yeah, probably. Not because it's a good video, just because I took advantage of a, a popular thing at the time. Feels good. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the good stuff here. Some spicy enchiladas. Warning, this section might get a little bit explicit. Mom and dad, if you're watching this video, I'm sorry. <laughs> waste of bandwidth. I'm very sorry about the waste of bandwidth. Your people can get in contact with my people and we'll get you a refund on the bandwidth for that free video. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry to disappoint, sir. You can leave a review on my Google reviews page for my, my YouTube channel. One star. Not worth the bandwidth. <laughs> Dude, get some contacts. You look like a fucking mass killer or school shooter. God, okay, we'll do the rest of the video without glasses on. I'm sorry. Can you repress your... Uh, okay, we can't. I'm sorry, Luke. Is that your name? Was that your name? Lucas. Sorry, Lucas. I'm gonna have to look like a school shooter for the rest of this video. Just, just listen, don't look. Can you repress your autism for half an hour? Just half an hour, stop being autistic. I'll try. My dick's pretty limp now after watching this. Probably, probably not the point of the video. Yeah, not not the point of the video. Anyone who uses the word fanboyism loses my respect. Fanboyism, 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 fanboyism. What happened to your face? Is your wife beating you again? Scott, this has to stop. You know? I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to get into it, but... 
oh man, you spent like 40 minutes on that tiny sword and it doesn't even look good. <laughs> oh, it feels bad, man. Love the content and technique. Hate, hate, hate brush in the mouth thing. Not a good trait to teach new folks. That sponge thing is so nasty with bacteria and mold and you are sucking your brush. Besides the heavy metals in the paint, ugh, so gross. I'm sorry, mom. That's my mom, right? No, Pedro, no. Mom's name's not Pedro. What a toxic video. I'm over pro painters lambasting contrast, contrast paint. If people don't need painting advice anymore, channels that exist for painting advice will dry up. Simple as that. So of course you've got to crap all over the product. Yes, there is a conspiracy theory going on. All YouTubers hate contrast paint because contrast paint is going to make every single miniature painter, every single one in the world, self-sufficient to the point where they will never need any advice ever again. You caught us. What can I say? <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> I don't like this guy. Definitely an annoying hipster. But this is a good video anyway. I mean, what more can you ask for, okay? If you could simultaneously be an annoying hipster, but still make good videos? I don't know. We'll chalk that up to actual positive comment in the end. I think it's an important thing to say that while these are, you know, kind of funny and people say mean things, uh, 99% of the comments that I get on my videos are incredibly encouraging and incredibly nice. Um, I'm not trying to like say that, oh, look at all these mean comments I get. It's not that at all. It's just kind of funny to look at them sometimes. All right, let's answer some questions. <sighs> there are a lot of questions about like the highs and lows for the channel for me and like my, what my plans are for the future and things like that. So let me just kind of chat about the channel for a little bit. Uh, highs and lows for the channel, I would say probably were like the last month leading up to Black Friday. It's kind of a high and a low. The high being that on Black Friday, I was able to finish everything that I wanted to have finished by Black Friday. The low being the amount of work it took to get to that point. So basically the week before uh, Thanksgiving in America and like the weekend of Thanksgiving, I was, I was gone. I was in Europe for a trip and I was at my parents' place celebrating Thanksgiving. And so on top of losing like an entire week and some change, uh, to various vacations, I had to make my normal YouTube videos that came out on Fridays. And then I had to make 67 other videos plus 10 other additional lessons for an online course, figure out how to put it online and how to organize it and get feedback from other people to make modifications, figure out how to like put it on an e-commerce site and sell it. So it was like a lot, it was a lot to do in that, uh, in that short amount of time that I could have probably planned better for leading up to that Friday. I was like working on it while I was in uh, like Europe on vacation because I hadn't finished it entirely. Um, so that was kind of like a really stressful time, but that paid off and was also a good thing. Plans for the future. Uh, I want to do the community event where we all paint a model, a, a Zinch Chaos Space Marine, like a Rubik Marine army and uh, donate it to charity. I'm still doing that. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of legality around doing like raffle sales and charity donations. And I wanna make sure that I'm legally in the, in the clear. So I wanna make sure that I do that correctly. Um, a lot of questions about the miniature and, and whatnot. Um, the miniature sale was profitable for me and it was an awesome experience. Um, I'd love to do it again. I'm looking into making a wood elf that's kind of more like a swampy elf. <laughs> Basically, a wood elf that would exist in a part of the forest where other wood elves don't really want to hang out very much because that isn't very nice and flowery and stuff. Um, so looking into that, but there are other subjects too, like death knights or liches or other cool things that I could probably make miniatures out of. There are other things that I have planned for the YouTube channel. But I don't really want to say them out loud because typically when I say things out loud, like it seems like I'm guaranteeing them and committing uh, to them. And I have a lot of ideas that maybe not, maybe might not actually pan out. So we'll hold them for now and maybe they'll come out and hopefully you like them when and if they do. Another thing about future models is that I know people are kind of uh, wanting a 32 millimeter miniature. Um, and I think, I'll look into uh, making both scales, 32 and 75. I know 
typically you can't take one sculpt and do two different scales with it. Like a lot of the detail on a 75 millimeter model wouldn't render down into a smaller scale. So you kind of need to have two different sculpts, but maybe we can start with the complicated big one and derive the small one from it. I'll see what that costs and maybe we can do an experiment and see if it's worth it. All right, some actual questions. What are your top 20 favorite Goober Town moments? Probably every moment with a cat. Those are all the good ones. Not not the miniature painting, just this is the cats. This year you made the jump from working full time to becoming a full time YouTuber. How has it impacted your joy connected to the hobby? You know, I wouldn't call it like an impact. It wasn't like an immediate thing, but slowly over time I've started to kind of have less fun painting miniatures. I actually kind of realized this when I was chatting with John during the recording of a podcast. Um, so I think I need, to, I need to reconcile this. I need to reclaim some of the time that I spend making videos for just painting miniatures for myself. Um, and I think I'll start to get that mojo back when I just start painting minis and it's not necessarily for a video. Um, but so far I've been, I've been hanging on. Um, but yeah, some changes need to be made. What's your absolute least favorite mini you ever painted? It's not a mini, but it's a collection of miniatures. I think the Kings of War unit that I painted was my least favorite. Not because the models are bad, like they're actually surprisingly good. It's just because I hate batch painting. <laughs> um, so yeah, that wasn't very enjoyable. The level of, level of suffering was higher than normal. <laughs> is YouTube profitable on its own or is Patreon your highest income? What percent uh, of each, for example? I'll have a little pie chart here that kind of like shows what how it breaks down. But Patreon is the highest. Uh, Amazon affiliate is second highest, which is kind of a, a shocker for a lot of people. Sponsorships and ad cents are probably tied for third. Merchandise is the lowest income, but the new one is product sales being like the miniature and the digital course that I have on sale. Um, that's way too bursty right now to know what like the average is, but that has a contender to be a, a good source of income. But I think the question is asking, is YouTube profitable on its own? i.e. is Google AdSense enough to live off of? And the answer is absolutely no, um, definitely not. Is it possible to produce high quality mini painting videos using a GoPro or do you have to use a traditional DSLR? Definitely possible to produce videos with any kind of camera you have, whether it's a webcam or your cell phone or a GoPro or a RED. Um, if you, the presenter, are compelling enough and interesting enough and the subject you are doing is interesting enough and your information is, is valuable and helpful to people, uh, it's going to be totally fine. Do you have any plans to start collecting a new 40k army next year? No. Uh, if I did, I'd just keep playing my Dark Eldar if I, play, if I wanted to paint 40k stuff. I, I might have plans to collect a new Age of Sigmar army because mine is end of life. <laughs> I mean, not exactly, but it pretty much is. Alexander, what do you enjoy most about mini painting? I think it's a very efficient hobby. It's a combination of a lot of things that I like, like the geekiness in the lore. Like I'm a huge fan. A huge pan? I'm a huge pan. I'm a huge fan of fantasy. I really like the painting aspect, obviously, like the artistic uh, avenue that it has. And I love like the crunchy technical like gaming aspect that it has, even though I don't play it very much. It's just a combination of a lot of things that I like. Also painting like sculpture is really special. It's different than painting like a 2D thing or, or, or sculpting that 3D thing. It has its own kind of special thing about it that I really like. What are you most excited looking forward to in the next year? Models, meetups, uh, Golden Demon 2020, baby! It's the first Golden Demon in America since 2013, and it's at Adepticon. So going to that and, and doing Adepticon is always a ton of fun. Um, so looking forward to that probably the most off the top of my head. What is the best advice you'd give to a new painter in the hobby? I've been studying a lot of Roman Lapot lately. And I think the best advice that I could give to a new painter is that everyone's journey in the hobby is different. Some slower, some's faster. Some people paint bigger things, people paint smaller things. It's everyone is different. So don't be going comparing your journey with someone else's journey and then being sad about it, okay? There's no value in that. Everyone's unique. Just focus on what you got going on, on your journey, on your improvement, and just focus on joy. Focus on your joy in the hobby. What do you think is the most useful thing you learned this year when it comes to painting? I don't think it's any one specific thing, but it's just in general learning how to paint 
miniatures in a fast way that also looks good or good enough for a thumbnail or good enough for a video topic. You know, having to produce videos like in a week, you kind of have to learn how to do that um, because sometimes you want to paint a whole miniature and show a whole miniature. So you got to be good at kind of cranking stuff out. So I think that's probably the thing that YouTube has taught me the most inadvertently. Do you plan on doing more skits? Absolutely. I have two that are fully shot right now and need to be edited. One with Sam Lance, that's a, a lot of fun, it's a comedy. And another one that's a little bit more serious, a little bit more dour, um, but ends on a nice hopeful note. I've never done a serious skit, so we'll see how it turns out. Hope you guys like it. What is your favorite large miniature company and your favorite small-ish miniature company? Um, I think large is Games Workshop. I mean, I have no shame in saying that. I think they make some of the best like fantasy and sci-fi miniatures at that scale in the business. And I've been a fan of them for the longest time since I was a, a little kid. Uh, what's your favorite smallish mini company? Uh, I think there's a lot of good ones. Uh, Lucas Pina Pinochet, uh, Pedro Fernandez, uh, Terrible Kids Stuff, Nocturna. There's a lot of smaller companies that make great display miniatures. Any chance to be teaching a class on the East Coast? Um, Absolutely. Basically, me and John's plan is maybe do like three classes a year, four classes a year, maybe like once a quarter. And if we can get a cheap ticket somewhere, like an airplane ticket, we'll go. And then we'll set up something. That's the plan right now. We're not sure that's really going to work out in its entirety. Um, but that's what we're thinking about. Who makes the best tendies? Also, is there plans to do some gameplay videos? Tendies, obviously, is Kane's. Uh, if you want good fast food fried chicken in general, Popeyes is your best bet. Any plans to do gameplay videos? Yes, we've had one recorded for a very, very long time, but it's not the easiest thing to edit. Uh, as soon as I edit it, it'll be out. It's a game of me and John playing Guild Ball called Kill Your Friends. Uh, I want to finish it at some point. Have you ever seen a really awesome mini and then when you go to paint it, realize it's not fun to paint? Noticing a bad sculpt or flaws as you get in close? Do you just power through or decide it's not worth your time? I think I started to realize that less is more when it came to miniature painting. I'm not sure when, maybe like in the last six months uh, when I was painting like a games workshop figure and then I stopped painting it and painted a different model from a different manufacturer. I realized that, wow, we don't need to inundate models with every single kind of detail, utility belt, grenade, pouch, and everything you can imagine. Uh, it's okay to have maybe some areas that are just kind of open to interpretation and just like larger, smooth volumes. Um, I would say that's probably the, the biggest thing is that when a model is, is just littered in detail. <sighs> Crusher wanted to chime in on that answer. Maniac, I'm a big fan and I like the base videos you did. So here's my question to you. What was the best base you have done or seen? Uh, Monstroys does a ton of awesome bases and dioramas. Check those out. Roman Lapot does a lot too. Here's one called Cats and another called like uh, Forgotten Memories or something like that that were kind of just mostly just like base work. Um, and then they are, all of them are amazing. Check them all out. Why are you so gosh darn cute? <laughs> I just can't help it. Is it okay to paint minis and not be a gamer? Where would one draw inspiration from paint if they weren't ending up on a board? There's like an American thought that every mini you paint needs to be related to a board game. I actually experienced this when selling the 75 millimeter display miniature vampire. People were like, what's the, what's the point of this? Just for the sake of painting, like what's the point of a sketchbook? Just, just to draw in, right? Um, so absolutely it's okay to paint models uh, just for the fun of it, um, just for you know trying out new schemes or just because you're interested in the thing. Like uh, I, I painted a Slaughter Priest one time, I painted Queek Head Ticker. I don't, I don't have a Skaven army or a Corn army, but those models just looked cool, so I wanted to paint them. Definitely okay to do that. Where can you get inspiration? I mean, you can still get inspiration from the game if you want to. Uh, like for instance, you're painting a Space Marine, you can still look at the numerous chapters uh, space Marines there are to get inspiration for color schemes. Um, or you can look at things like comic books or graffiti or like metal cover albums or like uh, other 2D art um, or other miniatures on putty and paint or kumani or not. There's a million places you can find inspiration. What are your top video ideas that you want to make but can't at the moment? A, I mean, I love talking about this. There's an idea that I want to make about Space Marines called How to Paint the Best Space Marine where you start with like 
I don't know. You start with two two models, right? You have one that you paint with a paintbrush, one that you paint with an airbrush, and then from there you take different branches. And it's like, okay, here's one that's edge highlighted, uh, here's one that's recess shaded, here's one that's painted volumetrically, and you basically record the time that it takes to do each one of these steps, and you see the difference that each step makes. So you can basically have people kind of pick and choose how much effort they want to put into a Space Marine. Like they can look at the volumetric shading and lighting part and be like, okay, that's not for me. It takes too long and the outcome isn't good enough. And basically you can kind of look at the numbers that I'm pulling on my end and they'll be kind of similar-ish for you. And you can decide like what is worth it for you when it comes to painting. Yeah, how to paint the best Space Marine. It's going to take a long time because it requires me to like paint a million different like routes of, of, of Space Marine, um, but that's an interesting one. Another one would be uh, reviewing every single paint range that you can get right now. Maybe not every single one, like the millions of uh, varieties that Vallejo have, um, but just like comparing them all in a really meaningful way to figure out which one has the best properties that I would like the most and that you guys might like as well. Um, yeah, those two, they seem like they would take a long time to do it and I'm not sure I have time to do them right now. I actually have like a Google Doc of ideas. Let's take a look at it. Breaking out the ideas. No one steal my ideas. I would love to recreate a scene from a horror movie like uh, from, I think the mailman's here. Hey, what? The dog just had cat crap. <laughs> no. So like in The Conjuring, there's like a basement scene where the mom's getting like exercised. And just to like take like a screen grab from a horror movie or any movie really that'd be interesting like Blade Runner um, and recreating it in miniature form, that'd be really cool. And I'd love to do that. What video are you most proud of making this year? I think the 3D printing video is my most proud moment because I was so scared to make that video because, you know, it's just, you're messing with a new technology and you can kind of get really caught up in making a lot of mistakes. And and when you're kind of dealing with those mistakes, it's like f making a nice video kind of falls to the wayside. But I, I feel like I made a good video. It's a good quality video, nice and entertaining. And I also dipped my toes into the topic of 3D printing enough to kind of form like an 80% opinion. Um, so I think that was a good, uh, that was a good combination of good effort on my end and also a good video as an outcome with a new topic that I wasn't familiar with. All right, those were all of your wonderful questions. Thank you for submitting them. Some really solid questions that I might steal for like various interviews if I ever do them. So thank you for your thoughtfulness. Um, just some announcements uh, for me, if you're still watching the video at this point, I'm gonna take the entirety of January off. Um, number one, because it's kind of a terrible month for like AdSense and, and brands and whatnot, because it's the month right after December, the big month where you buy a bunch of crap. And also because I just need a break, I need to catch up on a lot of stuff that's kind of been like, uh, rising uh, kind of up around me. Like this shot might look okay, the set might look okay, but like around me is just utter chaos and mess. So I need to organize some things, kind of uh, fix some stuff, work on some commitments that I've had for people, things like that. And also take some time off and just play video games or paint miniatures or start on my golden demon entry. Uh, but yeah, so no videos in January uh, at all. Take some time off. Hope you guys are okay with that. I'm sure you are. You guys are awesome. That's it. No script in this video. I hope that I can edit some non-garbage video out of it that you guys enjoy. Uh, thank you guys for the amazing 2019 full-time YouTuber. Insane. Absolutely insane. My grandparents still don't understand my job. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for the support. I'm living a dream. I'm living a dream. Being able to paint miniatures, make videos about it, and put it on the internet. It's insane. Thank you so much for the support uh, for what I do. It's amazing. Um, I'll see you guys in February, uh, maybe with a whole new kind of video. Maybe it'll be kind of a continuation of the same thing. We'll see. We'll see kind of how I feel when I kind of come out the other side of that time off. I hope 2020 is just as good. I'm sure it'll be and even better. All right, guys.
How do I end videos? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs>